I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've done this intro three times. This is the one, I feel it in my bones. Good morning, everyone. Mike the Finder here, or actually, should I say Happy New Year? I'm actually not sure whether I'm gonna post this before or after the new year. I think it might be before, but it might be after. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. <gasps> anyway, today we're gonna be taking a look back at all the adventures we've had this year. We've gone to the Wild West Museum. We went to the Denver Nature and Science Museum. We went to Disneyland. We've been a whole bunch of different places. It's not quite as many adventures as I maybe would have liked to have done this year, and that's okay. 2020 is going to be crazy for this channel. I have so many plans that are gonna make so many cool videos. I plan on doing some really, really cool stuff this next year. But before we move forward, I just wanted to take a second and look backwards. We've been to so many cool places this year, I just thought it would be kind of cool. And just to get sort of hyped for this next year, I'm telling you, 2020, 2020 is the year, man. I can feel it. <laughs> anyway, I know a lot of you are brand new to this channel, and I just thought it would be kind of a cool idea to take a look back and see what we've done this year in case you haven't seen all of those videos. Let's check it out. When you come to a place like this at 7.30 in the morning, especially toward the middle to end of March, this is sort of what you expect, I guess. I just didn't really think it through that much. Coming up here at the crack of dawn, it just sort of signifies starting, starting fresh, right? So, and that's kind of what I want to do with this channel. This channel has, in the past, been a uh, daily vlog channel. And that is gonna change. I am gonna start vlogging again, but it's definitely not gonna be daily. And it's also not gonna revolve around my everyday life anymore. I've got this really vivid picture in my head of what I want this channel to be from now on. This channel is changing and it's gonna change for the better. And my full attention is now going to be put toward YouTube. I've already shot a couple episodes of stuff that we'll be releasing in the very near future. Um, and I'm really excited about the direction that this channel is about to take. This channel from now on is going to be a little bit different and I'm super excited about it. Today, we are in old Colorado City here to check out Magic Town. So uh, I'm not really too sure what exactly we're gonna find here, but it should be interesting nonetheless. So uh, let's go check it out. This is what we have in store for us once we get in to the thing here. This is incredible. The fact that somebody even thought to do all this is just, is just too cool. This guy looks like he's like, nope, don't gamble anymore. My gambling days are behind me. Look at the scale of that. That is so awesome. You know, I remember when this is just one clay building. This town's gotten too big. It's seriously as big as one of those mills. I was gonna do where you, you'd look in and you'd see this men's restaurant in his old bar. Uh -huh. And you'd, you'd get up close and then I was gonna put some of those um, uh, in the men's rooms in the urinals. All the little cakes? Yeah, yeah, the little cakes. <laughs> I was gonna put them down there and guys are going. So, and so this was all just, just inspired by like travels and stuff like that? I was a bummer. Excuse me, sorry. For many years, I was a vagabond. I was two years in Central and South America. San Francisco and LA Wino districts. And so this is kind of a sculptural autobiography. So how long exactly did it take you to put all of this together total, roughly? I, probably 40 years. Oh my goodness. I probably, and I'm still working on it. I probably, I, I can't remember when I started it, but I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. Went through two wives trying to explain that I don't know when I don't have to do it. You know? <laughs> well, I read that this was put in in 1975. Is that correct? That sounds about right. Yeah? That sounds about right. Never went the art. Archie Crafty Trail. Yeah. Uh, you have some have galleries or nope, anything like nope. that. Nope. They're 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 a ripoff 
they're why they're why you can't name me three painters in this country. That's but you can name me writers question. and directors and and filmmakers yeah. and and uh, musicians, but you can't name me sculptors or painters. That was amazing. That was awesome. We just met the guy that created all this, and he talked to us for like five minutes. That was fantastic. You know, in a world of creating everything on a computer and everything is digital in a file, it's really, really refreshing to see somebody creating something with their hands and then sharing that creation with everyone else. And it was really cool to meet Michael Garman, the guy that created all of this in the middle of this place. And he was so, he was so cool and he was so nice about letting me film him and just talking to us for a few minutes. That was, I mean, I honestly couldn't have asked for a better experience coming to this place for the first time. Located about five miles outside of Colorado Springs in Manitou Springs. This has got about 40 rooms built into the side of a cliff. It wasn't always here. It was actually transported here in about 1905. It's kind of crazy that they could take all of this structure, pack it up, and then ship it here. A lot of it was actually shipped on the railroad, and it's just crazy to me that they could even move something like this. through here there's just all sorts of crazy little tunnels and hallways and hidden little rooms and it's, it's very small having to duck a lot but it's still very cool oh cool they had electricity <laughs> I got this. You got this. No problem. <laughs> oh man, the view from up here. Look at this. And this is where the gift shop is. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I just hit my head on this door. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how creepy this is. Now, I think, I do not think these are real. I think that they are, um, I think that they're fake, but uh, that does not stop them from being just super creepy. Gotta be honest, there's not a whole lot that creeps me out more than skulls. I don't know what it is. And then if you're interested, they have the first hundred years, all of the brochures and postcards from 1907 to 2007. You know, it's kind of hard to wrap my brain around the fact that this has even been around that long. I mean, this is before my grandmother was born. This is pretty cool. Well, hey there, Mr. Snubnose. <laughs> Look at this thing. He looks so mean, but so friendly at the same time. I'm very confused by this. I just cannot get over the view out here. 
That is just insane. Insane. Uh, back in 1880, there was a group of church uh, youth hiking through Williams Canyon down here, and uh, there was uh, two brothers on that tour, on that group, uh, in that group. They were uh, George and John Pickett, ages eight and nine, and they were brave young explorers. And they heard a howling noise coming from the side of the canyon, so they broke away from their tour group to go up there and see what the howling noise was, right? So they get up there, but the howling noise had stopped. They found uh, two sinkholes, though. And in one of those sinkholes, there was a little crawl space. So they crawled on in, and one of the boys lit a candle for light. And they were about 30 feet in, and the candle went out, and the howling noise had returned. <laughs> so they decided that they had found a haunted cave, as any brave young explorer would, right? So they hightailed it out of there, ran back to town, screaming, haunted cave. Well, it turns out the cave wasn't haunted. The howling noise was just the wind passing over the sinkholes, and the wind blew out the candle. But they didn't know that. How awesome is this? I know, like I said, a lot of this footage is gonna be really grainy. It's really, really dark in here, but bear with me, because this is gonna be really super cool. All right, so after that's coming down, I'm gonna that uh, this was the crawling tour in the beginning. It's no longer a crawling tour when it's all the way tell you about that in our next room, but we gotta go through here to get there, all right? I mean, I, can't, I really can't even describe what it's like in here. I hope that this camera's doing it justice. Is it doing it justice? Sort of, it's very grainy because it's very dark in here, but. <laughs> very beautiful. It took us about four minutes to get here. It took the original crawling tour 45 minutes to get here because they came through that up there. Yeah, see what I mean? Yeah, so right here where the smooth rock meets the rough rock over there on the wall, my flashlight needs new batteries. Um, that right there is where the floor was. So they crawl in here and they have to go up this wooden rope ladder. Uh -huh. Well, in 1880, they didn't have flashlights. They had open flame lanterns, right? And they quickly realized that open flame and a dry wooden rope ladder is a bad combination. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get up there, but you ain't coming down without a fight. So uh, if you look over here next to the, the, la uh, the ladder, over here on the ceiling, this is where they would snuff out their lanterns before they would climb up this rope ladder 30 feet in the cave darkness oh. before they could relight it on the other side. We're gonna experience cave, cave darkness later on and you'll understand, woo, you don't wanna do that. This is insane. There's so many little turns. That you could so easily get lost in here if you don't just follow the tour. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Yeah, Oh, I want to go back there. Look at all of this. We're going to go through my favorite passage in here, okay? It's called Tall Man's Headache, Fat Man's Sorrow. There's a little poem to help us get through it. It goes like this, okay? If you duck, tuck, and suck, with any luck, you don't get stuck. I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. <laughs> now follow me, watch your head. <laughs> Do not hit your head. Do not hit your head. Oh, I hit my wrist, but it's okay. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm so glad I decided to do this. You know, I almost stayed home today. <laughs> oh no, someone's stuck! See, there's so many little passages and little things. I just don't... You could easily get lost in here for days. Tight squeeze, very tight squeeze. Ugh. Dude, look at how cool this thing is. Oh, it's even got a little replica on the dash there. Oh, this is awesome, oh my God. <laughs> Batman looks like he is ready to take on some crime in there. My God, man, Starsky and Hutch. Oh, look at how rad this is. Look at the plate. Ecto-1B. This is something I've never seen before. These Jurassic Park Jeeps sort of show up all over the place. They're still really cool. This is not one of those things that is super rare like this. Look at how rad that is. Okay, so this is by the 501st Legion. Look at these things. 
Oh. I kind of want to just put that on right now. Look how bad this is. These are absolutely awesome. Did you make these? Yes. These are rad, man. Yeah. These are really, really cool. I wear them too. So Do you really? Where are you based on? Uh, everywhere. Our Mountain Garrison. This is uh, Colorado, Wyoming, but the actual charity organization is worldwide. Oh, cool. Very cool. So, how long does it take to make something like this? It depends on how detailed you want to get. Right. So I have a lot of painting work and assembly work and some damage repair too and all that yeah. stuff to do on there. So yeah, it depends on what you're doing and very cool. Yeah, how deep you want to go with it. So awesome. This is this is really good work, man. Thank you. All right, have a good one. So, okay, now we actually have our armbands and we can get into the actual jam here. I'm 6'1. Look at the scale of this thing. Is it a blink? That is insane. Yeah, he blinks, man. Oh, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I told you. Like I said, there's a lot of cosplay that goes on in places like this. Um, I'm not a huge cosplayer myself but I can really, really appreciate all the hard work that goes into making all of this stuff. Like, check this stuff out. People, people may be, like Mike said, people, people may be with their brains and hands. It's just ridiculous. I have a hard enough time here. Oh man, I am a big fan of that. I have a hard enough time here. So like I said, it looks like people are actually bidding on these items. Which is pretty cool. I wonder when they're gonna be doing that. Dude, look at this thing. That's pretty cool. This thing is insane. Some wands. I've always been a really big fan of the curved wands. Those are always really, really cool. Oh man. Poor little bunny. Wonder what that bunny did to deserve that. <laughs> I like this one right that's here. Cool. These are fantastic. It's basically bad. I want to get it, but also. <laughs> Look at that. I am so hyped. Look at that. I am so hyped. So I just met the guy from Dawn of the Dead, and I could not be more hyped. I'm going to show you the picture now. Isn't that cool? He was uh, he was pretty nice about everything, but I still have not gotten my hands on the actual photo yet. They said but you some got your hands on him. Yeah, oh. I did. Uh, that sounded weird. Yep. It says I'm old and worn out. If there's a problem, please give us a shout. I feel your pain. This place is exactly my jam. I love, love, love stuff like this. Museums like this are not going to be around forever, so it's really, really important that you support these places when they are around so that we can keep them around as long as possible. If you like history, it's important to keep history alive by learning as much about it as possible. This is amazing. Let's look around. Got these old wooden boards underneath me creaking. Just adds to the experience, that's fantastic. Look at this place, this is amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> I was not anticipating that, that was, that uh, was kind of scary. This is the guy that freaked me out earlier. <laughs> I just wasn't paying attention to what was in the corner. <laughs> oh, super cool. Oh, I think I have to play this. This reminds me of Silver Dollar City. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Silver Dollar City, but there are these little targets that you shoot with these light guns. And it says, test your aim hitting the red targets. 
Let's do this. Well, I'm no Annie Oakley, but... I've been in here a long time, and I never do see him at all. I know he wouldn't mind if you were to give me a hand and get me out of here. I'm uh, really a sweet, lovable guy. Uh, Can't you tell? You'll see what a neat guy I am once you get me out of here. You know, I don't think the sheriff would like that too much. I, I know he's he's over there sleeping, but uh, I just don't I just don't think he'd like that too much. I I think I'm just gonna go. I really need a gun to help me get out of this place. I'll pay you real well if you'll get me a gun. Honest, I will. I am not gonna get you a gun. You are in jail. The sheriff locked you in there for a reason. I'm not gonna give you a gun. Look, I'm not gonna give you a gun, but I'll give you this here quarter, okay? Looks like it's tradition around here to give him money. So I'll give you this here quarter. How about that? Good, good, good luck with all that. To those of you who have just joined us, welcome aboard the Disneyland monorail. For your safety, please remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the cabin. Watch your children, and no smoking, please. like that, we're in Disneyland. part of the ride right here it looks so different from the last time I was in here this looks amazing This is gonna be my first time seeing the new redhead scene too, so I'm super excited about that. Guy's foot's not hanging over anymore, that's cool. I know she's the devil with the heart black. Bring me the punch needle, we'll battle the bowl. We'll battle the bowl, we'll battle the bowl. Bring me the punch needle, we'll battle the bowl. You ever heard an accordion solo? It goes like this. As I eat here, I thought it'd be cool to kind of explain why I love this place so much. When I was growing up, I was never able to come out here. I lived really far away from Disneyland, and so the park I grew up going to was Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. So when I came here, 
was sort of a really, really big deal. But that's why I love this park so much, is because I was never able to come here as a kid. And when I was able to come here as an adult, it just lived up to all the expectations I ever had and quickly became my favorite place on the planet. is a blast though wow this is one of those hit or miss things it's either you get really really wet or you're totally totally fine and this time i got totally totally wet Ooh. Oh. we invite you to beautiful people on the dock bye okay now we invite you to the rest of them <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the World Famous Jungle Cruise. My name is Skip Ricky. Towards our right hand side, you'll be able to see the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Where world famous archaeologist Dr. Indiana Jones and his team are looking for the world's greatest treasure. Unbeknownst to them, I'm standing right here. <laughs> the worst part of the day. It reminds you of being at an amusement park. Or yeah, exactly. I feel like I'm at Disneyland right now. Just or yeah. Being in this town is like being in a constant queue line anyway. <laughs> Too many people, not enough roads and or anything else. I just found one of the coolest booths, Controller Chaos. And it looks to me like they are actually customizing different controllers. Oh, look at that one. Whoa. That is awesome. Oh man, that Donkey Kong one though. <laughs> These are incredible. If I still played Super Smash Brothers, I would be all over that right this second. Then they got some Switch Pro controllers here. This one's actually really, really cool. I'm a much bigger fan of this one. Said so these run 150. And then look at this customized dock. That is awesome. They do them all. They do Xbox One, Switch, GameCube, everything. This is the kind of stuff that I collect. Oh my gosh. Look at this one. Whoa. That base is incredible. Wow. This Boba Fett's probably 15, 16 inches tall. This is insane. It's like this booth was made specifically for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is insane. Yeah, this is very well put together. Oh, look at this guy. That's awesome. That is so cool. And they've got all their Star Wars stuff down here at the bottom. This is just everything that I love, including 
the nightmare before Christmas. Look at this guy. Oh. Then we got zero right here. Oh my gosh. I want that one. Okay, this is something I've only ever seen on the internet. Look at how amazing this is. I have had my eye on this for a while. I personally like the non-painted version better, but this is insane. The non-painted version looks more a little more like a sculpture, like a like an old school statue. But just look at the detail that goes into this. This is XM Studios, one of my favorite statue makers. They just make insanely good stuff. Look at Mr. Freeze there. Look at this whole thing. This is incredible. What do you think? You got three grand laying around for this? Dude, I wish. Uh huh? I wish. I would throw it down in a second. In a second. Me too. So they said they were going to pull this giant, giant Joker statue down. Let's look at it. Secret compass. Awesome. Thank you. The look on his face is so unbelievably disturbing. Yeah. It moves. Just so you have a little bit of scale here. Look at that. That's. I kind of, I'm kind of uncomfortable being this close to him, actually. I'm just curious if you want to say hi. Do you, do you want to? Okay, don't take this personally, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk away now. <laughs> so much attitude. What's up, dude? Oh my god. <laughs> I love that one. Oh it is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome animal. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. It smells horrendous in here. <laughs> the smell that's radiating from this building could probably knock someone out. No kidding. <laughs> and from here, you can actually see pretty much all of Colorado Springs from up here. There's down the downtown area there. Wow. I knew we were like pretty far up here, but I didn't think we'd see any of these amazing views like this. Wow. A lot of the animals that are supposed to be around in these cages are not around in these cages. And I feel like they're kind of hitting peak season here. So it's kind of weird that there's not more animals. So you do plan on having animals on this animal tour? I hate that man. The bears. The bears. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Oh my. A bears. A bears. A bears. A bears. <laughs> Finally, we found the bears. Look, there's bears. Just chilling. Barely doing anything. <laughs> Barely doing anything. <laughs> Barely any animals. <laughs> They're barely there. <laughs> Yet another bear, bear joke. It's a, it's a bear joke. I barely know her. Do you get it? It's a, it's, a, it's a bear. It's a bear. I feel like you've been holding on to these jokes for weeks. He didn't like that one. Hey, buddy. Wow, he sure was monkeying around. No, he sure <laughs> was. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Towering above all of the people stands the master goat. Nom. 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 
I look like a crazy person just going, nom, nom. They've got a replica of the big giant ball that we all live on spinning here. And I was very impressed by this when I first walked in. It's just very, very, very detailed and very cool. Look at how detailed and awesome that is. Then I saw this. <laughs> I am so uber impressed with this. This is amazing. And look, it's nighttime on this side. This is so much cooler than just a giant static spinning ball. Giant static spinning ball, you have been outdone. Whoa! Crystal treasure from Mexico. Whoa! This is an entire room full of crystal. I'm not even sure that this camera is gonna do this justice. This is... Wow! Seriously, look at that! This kind of stuff right here reminds me of Fraggle Rock. Isn't this the kind of stuff doozers make structures out of? And Fraggles eat because it's delicious, so doozers keep working? I'm pretty sure I just described the relationship between doozers and Fraggles. I'm sorry. This place rocks. <laughs> rocks. You ever wondered how an escalator works? Boom. Wonder no more. See? Not complicated. Is it weird? I'm a huge fan of escalators. Is that, I feel like that might be weird. It's kind of weird, right? And then this is my favorite part of this museum is the wildlife halls. with Ben Stiller right right just from looking at this it's sort of hard to tell where the diorama ends and the wall back there begins man this is so well put together you know I think the reason I'm such a big fan of stuff like this is because I'm really really into action figures and statues and busts and this is just like the ultimate version of that I don't know if you've ever seen that video of that seagull laughing. I'll put it here now. <laughs> That's all I see when I look at these guys. They've even got a diagram of him doing it. <laughs> this one's one of the bigger dioramas here and it's uh, pretty impressive. That painting back there is like, it really sells this whole piece. I'm taking more of an art approach to showing you guys this stuff because I don't know a whole lot about like actual plants and animals and stuff like that. But what I do know about is art. And this stuff is very impressive. This one's really cool. I don't think I've ever actually seen this one before, but the effect that they're using to simulate it being underwater is awesome. And then you mix that with the background and that is just one cool effect. The whole reason I've had this place in my head is because of these dioramas. And these dioramas are so super cool, they deserve to be shared. This guy is a Diplodocus. His head is gigantic, but watch this. You follow his head to this giant, giant body. I can't even get it all in frame. But then you walk around here and you follow the tail. All the way around. 
Look at this. This goes from one side of the room to the other. This is what I'm saying. It would be amazing to see these guys running around. Just the, the sheer scale of him. This leg bone is as tall as I am. It's hard to even wrap my head around that this was a thing walking around this planet for so long before we were here. This Tyrannosaurus Rex head is massive. And, and look at the size of those teeth. Wow. Okay. Well, that was fun. When I shot that intro, I hadn't actually had time to sit down and start the edit for this video yet. Once I did do that, I had already shot an outro whenever I shot the intro. And I thought it would be a good idea to reshoot the outro just because now that I've had time to actually sit down and look at all of these videos, it's kind of crazy whenever you go and you put all this stuff back to back, it seems like it's a lot of stuff that we've done over the last year. and. To be honest, all year long, I have felt like I haven't been making enough videos because I promised myself when I started this that this channel was gonna get one episode a week. But then I ended up having to have surgery and right after that, I sort of came to the conclusion that I wanted to leave Colorado. And so the entire time I have been vlogging on this channel, my life has been in transition. Looking back at these videos, I didn't quite realize when I started vlogging was right around the time everything started to get packed up and this house started to get to a point of being able to sell it. And before that, all I was doing was Mike the Finder episodes. And I know a lot of subscribers have found this channel because of my Mike the Finder episodes. Looking back at all, only 11, I wish there were at least 12 so I could say I averaged one a month, but there were only 11 this year. All 11 of those videos, I am super, super proud of. And looking back from the start of this idea that I had all the way up to this Garden of the Gods video, there's been so much progression, not only with my camera skills and how I shoot stuff, but with how I act on camera. It's almost night and day because I've gotten more comfortable talking to this camera over the last eight to nine months than I ever was when I was daily vlogging before I changed the channel name over to Mike the Finder. This is the kind of stuff that you don't realize until you sit down and you watch this whole thing back to back. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I cannot wait to share 2020 with you guys and I am all in. 2020, I am all in with this channel. The last five months or so has been, has been a real bummer for me because I want all I want to do is make videos because it's the only thing I have ever found. Even music didn't bring this to me where I feel creatively fulfilled when I make these videos. And I've said this multiple times and I know I've said it multiple times because I just edited all the videos that I put out last year into one compilation. It blows my mind every time I get a new subscriber or somebody leaves a comment or a thumbs up. The fact that people care about what I'm making is awesome. And if you care about the stuff that I'm making, thank you so much. 2019 has been a real turning point in my life. Not only with this channel, but a lot of personal stuff as well. And I'm looking to follow that road of change even further in 2020, including moving, including going on a bunch of road trips, doing a bunch of really fun stuff that I have planned. And, and I honestly cannot wait to share it with you guys. So thank you for subscribing to this channel in 2019. In 2020, if you didn't see my quick update video, but you are watching this, I'm kicking it January 1st into two or three videos a week. And that's gonna be regular vlogs for now because I want to deliver content, but at the same time, I, I need to be able to sort of tackle both the content and everything that's going on in my real life at the same time. And vlogging for the next foreseeable future anyway, I don't know how long it'll last, I'm sure it'll last a little bit, but for the foreseeable future, if I merge these two together, everything is gonna go better. So. This was all just a really long-winded way to say thank you guys. You have no idea what the support for this channel means to me. And 2020 is going to be, I think, one of the best years of my entire life. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. So thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Mike the Finder out. See ya.